Toronto, we're expecting high winds up to 25 centimeters of snow, ice pellets, also a possibility of freezing rain this afternoon. So a conservation authority, they've issued a flood watch because of the strong winds. So Shit. of course they're saying anyone around Lake Ontario. Last year, I was attending the Buffer Festival here in Toronto, and I got to meet some of the most amazing photographers and creators on YouTube. So I got to meet Sorel at some type of party, and she is as ma amazing in person as she is on camera. If you don't know Sorel, Sorel was the person that coined the term the advanced selfie. She's one of the most amazing women photographers I know on the internet, so you know, check out her stuff. Now, the reason why I'm talking about Sorel is that I wanted to have my hand at the advanced selfie, except you know, I couldn't just do the same thing that Sorel does. We had to make, I'm a travel photographer. I need to like go out and do something extreme 99% of the time. And luckily in Toronto today, it is the most extreme weather possible. So this is our balcony. And this is like, just, just all of that right now is all snow. It's crazy. So today I want to talk to you guys about how to do an advanced selfie in the absolute most brutal extreme weather possible. Now, small disclaimer, I haven't actually taken Sorrel's course, the Advanced Selfie University. Just figured I could be able to reverse engineer everything. So here we go. So you need to be prepared for your window shoot. So one, you need gloves. Gloves is the most important thing out of your entire camera kit. You guys stay warm. Two, you need your iPhone. iPhone is definitely going to be key with the corresponding app that goes with your camera. Next, you need a microfiber cloth. This is key to keeping your camera dry. Uh, lenses, you need weather sealed lenses. So this is the G Master 24 to 70, as well as this is the 16 to 35 F4 Sony camera lens. Lens hoods, lens hoods are extremely important to keeping the water off your lens. A weather sealed camera, this is the Sony A7 III. I found that this works pretty well in the winter time. I've had instances with the A7 II, S2, where the batteries just go completely after you step outside. So this Valley with my buddy Maiku. Yo, did your battery just die because it's so cold outside? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's like negative 30. That's how cold it is outside. <laughs> my first battery died as soon as we took it out. So, so this has been proven to work outside in negative 30 degree weather. This is the Manfrotto Element. This is like a quick travel easy uh, tripod. Finally, if you are planning to do any type of video, you need this fuzzy thing on any type of microphone. This is a dead cat. This blocks the wind sound from penetrating the uh, microphone piece. Okay. So there's a couple things you need to know before you go outside. One, everything is a ticking time bomb. The battery life in your camera is gonna die a lot faster than it does in regular weather. Uh, the battery in your microphone is also gonna die pretty fast. The battery in this guy, you can't shoot with these things. The point and shoot, this is the RX100 Mark V. This will die within a minute from going 100% to zero if you're outside shooting in negative 30 degree weather. So you definitely can't shoot with this. And your iPhone, your iPhone will die if you like just leave it out. That's why I also should, should probably added this. This is like a battery pack as well as a cable to charge your iPhone as you're doing things outside. Uh, okay, so that explains all the equipment. Let's go into clothing. This time we're going to situations where you don't really have control over everything. In fact, today there's gonna to be ice pellets, it's gonna be hail, hail the size of like these golf ball hail, which is gonna be insane, freezing rain, all this horrible, horrible stuff. And in order to prepare for that, I have this. So this is a helmet. This is to protect myself from the hail because the hail is gonna be insane. These are ski goggles because when you have ice, when you have ice pellets just like flying into your face, you don't want that stuff in your eye. It hurts. It literally hurts. And I, I tried that this morning when I went to get coffee for Venus. It just was brutal. Hey Venus, is this too much? For today? Yeah. No. <laughs> this is literally going to be falling ice outside today. So today I have a couple of objectives. One, I need to get a thumbnail for a shot about immigrating to Canada. Why not do it in the worst winter ever? Two, I really want to focus on getting shots in Toronto during the most extreme weather possible. Simply because, one, I'm kind of bored of Toronto, to be honest. Like I've done the, I find myself taking the same shots over and over again. And I consider this 
extreme weather like this to be a challenge. So right now I'm at the distillery district. It's an extreme weather condition right now. Uh, and it's literally ice pelts shattering my the reason why we're just held in a goggle. Uh, you can probably hear the wind coming through to my oh that hurts. Ah! As I was saying, you need to set up all your equipment before you go out and you take the shot. Uh, so I'm gonna put the tripod together right now and I'm going to and I'm going to uh, figure out how to anchor the tripod down because it's 70 kilometer winds out there right now. Oh God. Right now we're heading off to the Rebel Dock where there's supposedly supposed to be a Skyline of Toronto but it might be all blacked out. The ice might be frozen and it might just give us an opportunity to get some crazy shots out on Lake Ontario. Okay, step number two is envisioning the shot. Making sure that you take have a final vision of what you're looking to achieve. And then when you go out into location, you actually shoot the shot, you need to be able to uh, take the shot in a way which is gonna give you room to manipulate the shot later. In fact, I had a shot that I took a couple weeks ago. This is what Toronto looked like with a frozen, half frozen lake. I'm back here, I was, I was hoping that the lake was going to be completely frozen for the shot, have a little bit of a silhouette of the skyline in the background, but that is exactly not what's happening here today. Ugh. Just 100% water. That's not what I was expecting. A part of the extreme version of advanced selfies is being able to do with what you have. Not every time is going to be perfect. Not every time it's going to be what you envisioned, but it's about being resourceful while you're here on set. Except this is a total crapshoot. I was planning to stand on the, on the ice. There's no ice here. So I guess we're going to move on to the next location. I imagine that this would be a thousand times easier if I had a car, but I don't, so I just make do with what I have. That's literally everything about filmmaking is just about making do with what you have and trying to get the results that you're looking to achieve. Yeah, all right, good talk. Let's go on to step three. I'm gonna head off to Cherry Beach. <sighs> brutal, absolutely brutal. So filming update, I just didn't think it was safe to go to Ch I didn't think it'd be safe to go to Cherry Beach. There's a lot of industrial trucks. There wasn't any sidewalk. I'd be walking along all the industrial trucks. Sometimes it's good to kind of just call it quits and go back to safety. Hey, hey. So this version of Extreme Event Selfie Extreme Edition, we're gonna you're gonna take a look at this news helicopter footage thing, and you're gonna take a photo of me while I stand out there. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, cool. Oh my god, they're zamboying the ice. Do you want to go skating? No. Yeah, look at it. Look, it's going to be clean. No, I think so. Not now. Okay, so this is the big shot. This is the... Well, right now, the snow has turned into freezing rain. And right now, the it's just absolutely dreadful. My entire camera is soaked. Everything is soaked right now. So if you're planning to do extreme... I guess advanced selfies. It's very important that you get a weatherproof camera. In fact, I'm actually kind of scared that this is gonna fully fall apart on me any minute now. But in any case, this is the shot I'm trying to take. I want to get like a welcome to Canada shot. You need to. The shot's supposed to be like you need to be prepared. Uh, the Toronto signs back here. And I guess I'm just gonna hold this.
All right, I'm gonna put a time for 10 seconds and then I'm gonna run over there, take a shot, come back. Just to give you an idea of how, how important it is to have a weatherproof camera in extreme conditions, take a look at this camera here. It's just completely soaked. Just through and through, water is everywhere. Hopefully it's not inside the camera. I think this should be okay. I think this is waterproof. Weatherproof, not waterproof, weatherproof. So the camera crew have actually changed the camera angle of their shot while I was in transport to Nathan Film Square. So this is the shot of me in City Hall, I guess. Who knew that they would actually change the camera? And uh, yeah, the, the shots that I got on that day were not very good. They were actually, none of the shots were usable. I'm not as good as a photographer as I thought I was in extreme weather. So on that bombshell, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Ah, that was such a wasted day. Jesus Christ. <laughs>